as God. He is before all things. Now, if we read continuing on verse, verse 18, if we go to verse 18, it says, And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have supremacy. So this is describing our God, right? Now, it is only like two verses, but let us unpack what that means. He is the firstborn. Now, in the olden times, when they say the firstborn, it is more like a, a title, like a firstborn. A title meaning in the olden times when you are the firstborn, you are the inheritor of all things. So here, he is the firstborn, he is the inheritor. This God, this person, referring to Jesus, actually is the creator, he is the firstborn meaning all things, the entire universe he is before that, and he is the inheritor, the inheritor of all things. That's what they understand, how they understand that, that Jesus Christ is the firstborn. Actually, he is the creator, the one who caused all the things that we don't fully understand. I mean, we are just having our gods here in the Milky Way, but there is, they say, hundreds of billions of galaxies in the universe. Not only that, they have discovered now, I was reading some of this, we thought that it's over. This universe that long. They said that there's still a lot of gases out there that keeps on exploding and creating more galaxies and stars. The making of new matter, new planets, new solar system keeps going as the universe expands. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying here, that Paul is saying that Jesus Christ, you know, is, and he means it literally, Christ existed before creation. You know what that means? Yeah. If you remove everything, close your eyes, remove this building. Remove America. Remove all the stars. Everything, remove them. What is left? God. That's, that's God. Because God is always the one who is the source and is the permanent one. The reason why you notice know is also in Colossians. At that time, there was a problem because this is after the resurrection. And they were undermining Jesus. Jesus. They say Jesus is just a special man, a special person. And they say that angels are better than Jesus. So the Apostle Paul wrote this, and he wanted to tell them, no, Jesus is supreme. Yeah. The angels are not greater. The angels are created beings. That's who they are. They are created beings. Jesus is co-equal with God because he was from the beginning. So that is something that the, the scientists struggle. They cannot explain the design. They cannot answer what is the purpose. They cannot. They think that everything is just by chance, by accident. They believe that it's chaos, but it's not. The beautiful thing about the universe is it's regulated. Something is controlling it such that it won't just become chaos. There's something that they cannot explain. So as Christians, we say the reason there is a universe, the reason why there is no confusion, the reason why there is no chaos is because the universe reflects an intelligent mind. Yeah. The universe reflects the mind of the Creator, the mind of Christ. Christ stands behind His creation. Christ gives the universe order and meaning. The precision of everything that is happening in the universe 
is a reflection of the providence of God. That's why it is there. And that is an important point. Mm -hmm. The faith of the secular world is based on blind chance, luck, and you see Cain. They think that it's all by blind luck, but it's not. But we see from the scriptures that God is behind all of this. So the power and purpose of God is the reason why we have the intelligent design and purpose ordered in the universe. So that's the first point I'd like to mention here. Christ before all, meaning Christ was the creator of all things. Now the second point I want to mention, let's go back to verse 17. Very interesting in verse 17 here. It says, Colossians 1, 17, And in him all things hold together. Not only is Jesus Christ the creator of the universe, he also sustains it. He holds it together. The world was made by his command, but it continues to exist because Christ sustains the universe. Yeah. Now that's very important. There are people who believe that God created the universe, and then after God created the universe, they think that God took a vacation, went to Vegas or someplace in the Caribbean. <laughs> and they thought he just gone and then man is on his own, but that's not possible because if Jesus Christ, if you remove God now, okay, if you remove the one that holds the universe together, remove God, you know what happens? Oh, we're gods. There will be no energy, there will be no planets, no matter, without God. God holds things together, sustains things together. And Jesus Christ is the inheritor. As inheritor, he will keep what belongs to him. You agree? If you, for example, are told by your parents that you're going to inherit this precious property, are you not going to make sure you keep that? It's yours. You keep what belongs to you. You build a house, you keep it, right? You build something and you keep it. That's what Jesus Christ did. He built the universe and he has meant to keep it. No one can destroy it. No one can take it away. Even if the enemy will try to do so, Satan. Satan would want to destroy it. So, what do we learn from that? We don't have to fear. You know, we sometimes hear about, whoa, asteroids. Comets coming. And then you see on television, you know, Discovery Channel, all these asteroids that they're going to hit the earth and the earth will probably explode, killing everybody. I tell you, by, by faith, with the assurance of the Bible, yes. Jesus Christ, yes. the one who sustains the universe, yes. the one who created the earth, yes. the one who created humanity, yes. will never allow it to be destroyed. Oh, yes. He will keep it safe. So, sleep well tonight. Yes. Don't be afraid of the nuclear, even nuclear. You worry, whoa, what about nuclear bombs? They'll destroy the whole earth. You have threat. I tell you, I believe in my Lord Jesus Christ, who is a God of love, and He will not allow the destruction of humanity. He will, that's what it is. He will keep things, hold that together. That's our Lord. Jesus Christ, because he kept the universe together from the largeness of it to the smallness of it, to the small atoms, to the people, Jesus. to his creation. Jesus Christ is actively involved in the world. Jesus Christ is actively involved in you because he cares for us. That's, that's him. He not only made the universe, but because he is love, he cares for his creation. Do you get it? He cares for us. 
Some of us are getting older. I feel it myself. Do you? <laughs> and sometimes we're just like, I'm losing my body. I mean, losing things, right? God has a solution for that. He holds you together. The burning in me, my body may be wasted away, but God has something better. And He will hold me together and He will make sure. In fact, He has already accomplished that because I was destined to die because of my sin. I was destined to be a mess. To be, I was broken because of sin. But God knew that. He is the beholder of things and will not allow creation to be destroyed. So He sent His Son to die without sin. So that this creation will be held together. That's what Paul is trying to tell them. That we have God. Who is a loving God. Who loves us. Okay, let's go to John 8 verse 56. John chapter 8 56. You can go over John 8. And display that uh, John 8, verse 56 to 58. This is our God. Now, He is fully God today, and He is fully human. Can you understand? Uh, that's difficult to understand. But this is who He is. I mean, what is in verse 58? Six. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw, he said, and he saw it and was glad. In verse 57. You are not yet 50 years old, Jesus. The Jews said to him, and you said you have seen Abraham?
He from the magnificence now goes and becomes relational. Relational and personal. He is the head of the church. That's why they say Jesus Christ, the creator of the cosmos, is the head. And they are of equal weight. That's why the church is important. He is the head of the church. And you wonder, well, how is that How is that that he, from the creator of the universe, the savior of the universe, to head of the church? God is teaching us something here that is very important. He is teaching us here that through the church, through the church, we will learn why we have the universe. What is the purpose of all this? It is through the church because Jesus is the head. It's through the church where the message, the truth, is being told. Other scientists and atheists, they try to find answers somewhere else. They try to experiment, go to the laboratory, use their telescope, do everything to find meaning in atoms and universe. But Paul is saying the only true meaning and purpose can only be found through the church. And the church, of course, through the body of Jesus Christ. Us. That's why we are discussing that now. We are talking about that now. Hebrews 1 3 says, The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact expression of His nature, sustaining all things by His powerful word. God spoke, the universe came. God speaks, the universe sustains. Today, God is still speaking through His Word and through the church. I think the problem that we have today is that people, and even including us Christians, yes. we lose the battle in, you know, the world is trying to put a lot of destruction where God is speaking to us. God wants to speak His Word, but our ears are tuned in somewhere else. We need, the church need to listen more to God. The church needs to listen more to the Word of God. Because in God's Word is life. We need to. There is a lot of competition for our attention. We need to learn to hear God's voice. We need to learn to be more quiet. And isn't it true, the more quiet you are, the more you hear, right? So we need in a spiritual way to learn to be calm and to be quiet. Remember, the time came and Moses was reasoning with God, going out of Egypt, and, and then God says to Moses, 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 stop. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. So much that we try to do sometimes on our own, we try to fix things in our lives, I can do that, I can solve it, and things begin to break. If we want our relationships to be held together, if you want our marriages to be held together, if you want what we do in the church to be sustained and to be held together, we've got to stop. Stop and listen. Listen to God and trust Him. Proverbs 3, 5 said, trust the Lord your God in all your ways. Acknowledge it. You know, lean not to your own understanding. That's how we are able to sustain Christian life by depending on God and listening to His Word. Jesus is the head of the church. He is the shepherd. So let's listen. Let's listen to Him. Let's continue with Colossians uh, verse uh, uh, 19. Uh, let's see. That's it. And he is the head of the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead. So in everything he might have supremacy. So that's that's our Lord. He is supreme overall. Continuing, let's go to the Colossians 19. For God was pleased that all his fullness dwell in him. So he is complete. That's the one. There is no other, no other 
place we can find answers only through him. Verse 20. Verse 20. And through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed uh, on the cross. So here we see that Christ is going to reconcile him. He is our hope of the future. He is our hope of the resurrection. He's the beginning of the firstborn from the dead. He, the Bible even tells us in Ephesians 2, 6 to 7, we are raised up with Christ. Raised up with Christ. That's what the Bible says. The hope of the resurrection. See, what is all these things, you know, the universe and all of that? And then I look at my body, you know, I'm getting old and I'm wasting away. Paul says, don't be afraid because even death is temporary. God is going to give us a new body. A new body. A body that is a spiritual body where there's no pain, where there's no hurt. See, that's how God is going to sustain us so that we can be with God forever. Because God is forever. You know, it's like our body is like riding a bicycle. And then your bicycle is old and 50 year old and you struggle with its flat tire and God says, I'm going to replace your bicycle to a Ferrari. <laughs> a brand new Ferrari. I don't know if that's a good example, right? It's like our body, you know. God said, I'm going to give you something better. You know, and that's a promise. I mean, that to me is really incredible of what God has promised. So there, there is a purpose for all the things that God has done. And there's nothing for us to worry about because we have Jesus Christ who we started from the beginning who is the creator, who is the sustainer, who is the head of the church and now he speaks to us by his word. He is personal. That's our God. And we are that important. When it even says in the Bible that he loves you so much that he was willing to become one of us and die, take our place that's part of holding us together so that we don't die. Death is just sleeping, you know, but because it's going to give us a new body. So Christ is exalted, not only in the bigness of the cosmos, in the bigness of the universe, but Christ is exalted in the church. He is supreme. He is supreme over all. Yes. And also Christ is exalted among us, brothers and sisters, because he is the head of the body. And you and I are the parts of the body. No Christian can claim to be a Christian apart from the body. Can a member can you see an eye bouncing on its own? No, right? Or an ear poking? Cannot be. See, our Christianity is so defined and we are so identified because we are attached to the head who leads us, who sustains us, who is the creator of all things. And he will make sure that you and I are saved. You can sleep well tonight, every night, because God has assured all of us, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you very much for reminding us this wonderful truth that Jesus Christ existed before the universe. Before time and space, in fact, Jesus Christ is before all things. And He created the universe. And He sustains the universe. He's active every day, every minute, every second. And you tell us He is the head of the church. And we are members of that body. Lord, we exalt you. We thank you for this message that you give us. For comforting us, Lord, that we are okay, that we are safe. As long as we stay connected with you in the body, Lord God, there's nothing to worry about. As long as we recognize you as our Lord and our Savior.
Thank you, Lord, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.